quickly round Put on a happy face Wash off the clouds and cheer up Put on a happy face Take off that gloomy mask of tragedy In the night sky You'll look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile Oh, pick out a pleasant outlook Stick out that noble chin Wipe out that full of doubt look Slap on a happy grin And spread sunshine So gloomy, she'd never laugh or sing. Who wouldn't listen to me? I'll tease her, me no thing. So spread some shine all over the place. Just put on a happy face. Grey skies are gone and clear up. Put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer. Off the gloomy mask of tragedy, it's not a sign. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Pick out a pleasant outlook, stick out that noble chin. Wipe off that full of doubt, look, have a happy grin. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, and ditty people. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say how tickled I am. How tickled I am with all the holly. Hey, by Jove, I am too. <coughs> how did I get there? <coughs> First of all, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to wish everybody a very, very happy Christmas, and we'd like to welcome you all, welcome you all to a very, very happy and very Christmas party. So come in, folks. Everybody come in, because there's a little tot of tickle tonic for everybody here tonight. Uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we've got an absolutely fantastic feast of fa festive family fun containing fantabulous, frolicking, frisky, frisky, flighty females and 50 fine, fat, phenomenally funny fellows full of figs, fresh fruit and fish fingers and flipping flu. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, for our first guest, for our first guest this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to wish you a very fabulous personality. He's... Is it? Is it? It couldn't be. Is it? It is. Marion Faithful. How's, how's the baby? Not at all. It's wee Johnny Laurie all the way down from Inverkoki Licket in two hours flat. My goodness. It's amazing what you can do when you've got a tiger in your kilt. <laughs> it doesn't half tickle your carburetor. Oh. <laughs> I've got a wee present for you, a seasonable one, my boy. For me, Johnny? Here. Oh, just what I've always wanted. What is it? It's a bagpipe's egg. A bagpipe's egg? Oh, aye. Just uh, make, keep it in the warm. And in wee while, you'll have a bug baby baby. A little baby bug <laughs> yes. Oh, isn't that lovely? And it's got a tartan shell, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that lovely? Will you look after that for me, please? And I've got a present for you, John. Oh. This is especially for you. We've bought it for you. Ha! Isn't that oh. lovely? What is it? It's a portable hole. <laughs> it's a portable hole. It's ever so handy. It comes in handy for all sorts of things like making donuts or blowing peas through or... Uh, Yes, how beautifully useless. <laughs> oh, maybe no, 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 I see the point quite <laughs> well, Ken. A happy, happy Hogmanay to you, son. Thank you very much, A sir. A hooping Hogmanay, my wee fairly. Ah. Thank you very much. There he goes, back to Inverkocky Leaky. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this being the time of the year when we all uh, wallow in festive fun and panty. Here she is, I knew she'd arrive. Hello, Ladies and gentlemen. Isn't she gorgeous? Ladies and gentlemen, Vestibule, our pantomime principal boy to end all pantomime principal boys. You look lovely tonight, okay. Vesta. Not only, ladies and gentlemen, not only is she a, a principal boy, she's also a wonderful, wonderful cook as well. And she's going to tell us uh, her special recipe today for Boxing Day pudding. Oh. Tell us your recipe, Vesta. Well, you take a big blob of blotter and uh, you get blessed British blotter plus uh, two blob of bland. Then you place the blob of blotter, <laughs> place the blob of blotter in a dish, 
In ablation. In a block. In a place. Yes. And uh, yes. And then you uh, blunt it and a black it and bleat it. Blunt it and bleat it. Thank you very much, Pastor. God bless you. Happy Christmas. Bye bye, love. See you in pantomime. Well, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, we've uh, we've got all sorts of wonderful things. We're going to do some singing for you. We're going to do some carol singing because I love carol singing. Actually, I've uh, been. What's going on here? What's, what's this? Who's this? What is it? What's going on here? Yeah. What's going on? Let me in. Let, Let me in. I tell you. I am British. No, Let you in. You're British. You. Who is it? Who's there? Who are you? I am without. Oh. <laughs> well, in the state you're in, you're probably better off without, too. <laughs> here. A bit park here. It here is very cold, Lucky actually. You've nice. got your fur on. It's very All this snow coming down right. out oh, here. Oh, here. Let's go in. 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 It's not much, Mr. Dodge, no, but isn't. what I call my little old. Yes, yeah, very warm nice. yourself up there very a bit. Nice. Just a thing for a cold night. Mr. Dodge, oh. I, I done something rather naughty. What have you done? I went with my own money. <laughs> You're and hard. I bought you a little Christmas present. You haven't. Yeah. Mr. Connor, really. Yeah. What I, is it? I bought you, I bought you a bag of nuts. Bag of nuts? Yeah. Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, I've got you a present, Mr. Connor. Oh, you have? Yes. What you got? What I've, you got? Got, I've got a special present for you. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I've yeah. got you some crackers. Uh, Let's exchange presents. Exchange them, right? Yeah. Your nuts. Your crackers. Lovely. <laughs> Here, I've just remembered. What? My car, my car outside. It's got oh, no lights on. Oh, you better get out and see about it. Come on, I'll help you. You never know what they are. They're like yes. round here. Like oh, I Still now. snowing, I see. It is yes. snowing. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh. what you done? We locked ourselves out. Now what we gonna? How are we gonna get back in the gate? Well, I don't know. Just a minute. No, oh, I'm not stupid, you know. No, well, one. one of us is. Got the old key on here. 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 That door, although it opened magically and shut itself again, he's now stuck. I'll go round the back. I know the bloke. Hang on. Here. Yes. You've left me outside in the cold. You'll have to. You'll have to. You'll have to contribute to the fun before you can get in, Mister. Yes. You. I'll sing you a little carol and give us some money. You're oh, ready no, now. Sing me a carol. Then. Right. I. Right, I. Right. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me twenty-eight tins of army surplus sardines. 247 tanks that belong to the Royal Corps and the parson in a pair of trees. Hey, it's worth the money. If I had them, here, it's worth the money. I'll oh, take all I've got there. Bless you, bless you. You're what? a Christmas gentleman, you are, sir. Thank you, Bye-bye, mister. Bye-bye, mister. Bye-bye, Mr. Connors. Bye -bye, Mr. Bye -bye, Mr. Connors. Adam, we've got an idea that I have been talking about this thing. But there's only one thing you can do after that, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to say how absolutely tatifalurious, how absolutely tatifalurious, how absolutely full of plumptiousness I feel tonight, Mrs. I'm terribly full of turkeyfication and with a great feeling of duffishness. <laughs> duffishness, I'd like to say how completely ghoulified I am tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I've never been so tickled in all me dicky mint. And <laughs> I'm complete. I'm completely wenselessless. I'll, I'll talk to you, sir. You look. Oh, I see. Oh, that's the way I see. I'll talk to you, sir. You, you look full of the spirit. <laughs> He's full of something. He keeps slipping out of his seat. No. Isn't this a wonderful time of the year, ladies and gentlemen? Christmas time. Christmas time, the season of goodwill. You walk down the road and everybody's shouting things across to you. And this is the one time in the year when you're entitled to shout back. And you. And, <laughs> 
everybody you know. <laughs> Full of fun and everything else, and, you know, frolicking fun, and all giving each other presents, and all the kids, you know, they wake up excited on Christmas morning, ever so excited, and they dash into their mum and dad's room and shouting out, what lousy presents, you miserable old skin <laughs> I got a lovely present this morning. I got a 1965 diary, and we. <laughs> I, I woke up this morning. Which is, I did. I woke up this morning, love, at the crack of noon, and I pushed the lid off my crate, and I got out and felt into my stocking, you know. And I think I must have had a horse actually originally, because. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All today, you know, in our house, they've all had presents in our house today, and all day long, up and down our house, there's been a noise of roller skates. Out, up and down, up and down. In the end, my dad said my gra to my granny, for goodness sake, take them off, will you? And, <laughs> and my granddad, he, uh, he got a good present, my granddad, he got a James Bond walking stick. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. And here's a James Bond walking stick. When he presses the knot hole on the handle, boiling hot water squirts up the leg of your trousers. <laughs> I bought my granny one of those polythene bags. You know, I'm going to tell her it's a transparent nighty. And, uh, <laughs> I do hope, I do hope, though, that all the mums, I hope that all the mums got lovely presents today because they do deserve it. And, gentlemen, I think, you know, if you haven't already bought her a nice present, your, your missus, you know, get her really something really nice, not one of these sensible presents. Get her something she'd never dream of buying for herself. Buy her a shovel. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, he's bought my mother a beautiful floor cloth. And geez, we're all, we're all sitting here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, all full of pudding. And we, we did our pudding a smashing weight this year. To save time, we mixed it in the spin dryer. <laughs> Only took ten minutes and then four hours to scrape it off the ceiling. <laughs> We had a terrible job. We had a terrible job stuffing the turkey. It kept flying off the perch. And in the end, in the end, we had to buy one of those frozen turkeys, you know. And my mother put it in the sink to thaw. And my granddad came out. He said, "I see my granny's having a wash in the sink again." And she, uh, no, she enjoyed it, something, man. She enjoyed her dinner. She, she enjoyed her Christmas dinner, my granny. She was pecking away there like anything. And she said to my mother, she said, "By Joe, these are big peas." <laughs> My mother said, put your glasses on, they're sprouts. And I always feel sorry, you know. Do you know what I always feel sorry for at Christmas time? Always feel sorry for your stomach. You know, your poor old tums. Can you imagine what it must be like for your stomach? Because on Christmas morning, you know, your stomach, it's just lying there, you know, like stomachs do. They do be stomach. your, your tums just lying there on Christmas morning, and it's just half awake, and it's thinking to yourself, I wonder what it'll be today. <laughs> A few cornflakes, I suppose. A bit of toast. And all of a sudden, without any warning, a great big lump of duff comes hurtling down. <laughs> Your poor old stomach. It must think somebody's pressed the button. <laughs> today, actually, ladies and gentlemen, as well as being Christmas Day today, today is also, as you know, Ticklemas Eve, and I hope you make the most of it, and it is also anniversary day. Today is the anniversary of a gentleman who really makes Christmas for all of us. Today is the anniversary of the one and only Dr. Bungit, the man who invented stuffing. And <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that he's now taken a little hotel somewhere down here in the south of England, a very oldie worldy. It's called Bungit Hall Inn. And <laughs> also today is also the anniversary of Robert Browning, the well-known poet and gravy inventor. And it is like the stuff you have on your giblets. <laughs> have you had your giblets today, dear? Yes. Mind you, we always give our giblets to the cat and the dog, you know, because we love giving... Because it's, it's for animals as well, isn't it, Christmas? You should all give your pets presents. Get your, get your dog a catapult. <laughs> get your cat a dogapult. Uh, so it isn't... I mean, you know, isn't it lovely when you, you've just finished your Christmas dinner? You know, you've just finished your Christmas dinner in the afternoon, and you're all lying back, you know, saying... And all of a sudden, there comes a knock at the door. And the wife, the missus, she goes to the door and she says, Oh, well, she said, it's our Gladys, isn't her eight? <laughs> It's her, how oh, Gladys and her eight. Come in, Gladys. Father won't be long. He's just gone upstairs for his gun. And <laughs> say, Hello, children. Hello. What did you get for children? What did you get for Christmas, children? Drums and bugles. <laughs> oh, you should have brought them. We are. <laughs> the old, that 
these, uh, you know, all over the world, they have different ways of celebrating kiss Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas, why not? All over the world, they have different ways of celebrating Christmas. And, of course, we have in Naughty Ash, we have the traditional ceremony every Christmas morning of duff bunging. And the... Um, the <laughs> It's a, it's a wonderful uh, ceremony because at daybreak, as day breaks in Naughty Ash, the village blacksmith, he bangs the anvil with the oldest inhabitant and then <laughs> the procession moves towards the squire's house, preceded by a Scottish piper who gives a couple of Scottish airs, one of each leg. And the <laughs> squire's lady... The squire's lady appears on the balcony of Naughty Ash Towers and she calls out, Who wants pudding? And all the lads of the village shout, We do! And then they... <laughs> I say yes. Actually, actually, ladies and gentlemen, Naughty Ash boasts the biggest pudding in the world. And what are you looking at me for? <laughs> Actually, it's been, a, uh, it's been a great year for me. 1965, ladies and gentlemen, has been a, a fabulous year because uh, I, I had a big show in London and I also had a record in the top 20. As a matter of fact, I had a record at number one in the charts, which I think is a fabulous thing to be, to be the top of the pops. But I'm not saying that... Tears was the best record of 1965. All I'm saying is it was a great record and there were some fabulous records in 1965 like this gentleman who had this record right at the top of the... It's a nice thought that all the politicians, they must be celebrating Christmas now just the same, isn't it? They all have their turkeys, you know, for politicians, left wing, right wing and a liberal portion. <laughs> liberal portion for Mr. Grimmond <coughs> with stuffing. And, of course, the, one of the big uh, things in the top 20 of 1965 was all the protest songs, like this one. I don't believe we're on the deal of destruction. Mm. And they had all these, all in 1965, they also had uh, a gentleman who was right at the top of the tree, but unfortunately his record, like everybody else, slipped like this one. You never know, you might make a comeback. And there was a fabulous double team in 1965, ladies and gentlemen. These two are really up the pole. These two are right at the top of the pole, I should say. This fabulous double act. One of the biggest thrills for me in 1965 was appearing in the Royal Variety f performance, ladies and gentlemen. It was a really a great thrill. I was very deeply honoured. And one of the biggest hits of the 1965 Royal Variety performance was our next guest at our Christmas party tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Neville King. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for my next illusion, I, I require a small boy out of the audience. Now, any small boy... Oh, how nice. Would you bring boy here, please? Sure. Sure. What a load of old codswallop this is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what a load of old codswallop! Well, why did you come? Well, I come for the ride. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for, for my second uh, little trick, I say I'd like to uh, do a little trick with you, kid. <laughs> uh, would you stop that? That's all right if you, if you like that sort of thing. Yeah, and I like that sort of thing. <laughs> now, look, I want you to... Uh, I've got a little trick here that I want to show you, and I'm going to show it you once. Do you understand? You understand that? Get on with it. I'm not going to send you to a load of gold cobbler. Shut up! What's that egg, please? Now, in a few moments' time, 
<clears throat> you hear the magic words. What a load of all the magic words will be hoco poco, fried fish and cocoa, gone. <laughs> what a load! <laughs> all right, you're so clever. Where's the egg? Down there. D down where? There. <laughs> That's not the egg I used. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, 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 no. no. The egg that I used had a stamp on it. That's got a stamp on it. I don't think so. Take a further look. A, a look. <laughs> well, to wring your neck around, to, to wring your neck. How dare you do that? You see the yolks on him. How dare you do that? To wring your neck. Don't, they don't want the old gear. They don't want it. They don't want it. Well, what, what do these people want? Well, I don't know what to do. What should I entertain them with? Look, do a few impressions. Some, some, some up-to-date impressions. Up-to-date impressions. You know any impressions? Yeah. Ken Dodd. No, I'm sorry, you can't do Ken Dodd here. No, why? Uh, well, well, it's not, um, it's not etiquette. I didn't say Eartha Kit, I said Ken Dodd. <laughs> Guy Joe, have you been tickled Guy Father Christmas? <laughs> That's what they want. Lend me your glasses, my glasses, all right? Take them off. I just put them on. Take them off. My name is Harry Worth. <laughs> 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 And the kicker that Peter Kiker kicked... Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You've got that all wrong. It's Peter Piper. No, this is an incursionation of a gut ventriloquist. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't be knocking at me, would you? If the cat fits, wear it. <laughs> now, look, look, look. I've not always done this conjuring uh, lark, you see. Uh, I used to do a little bit of hypnotism. Now, how would you like me to do this little bit of hypnotism with you? You think uh, this will work? Yeah. Now, this is good. Now, what's this? First of all, I want you to look in my eyes. Get lost. <laughs> I said I want you to look. <laughs> and now I want you to relax. <laughs> Your head feels very, very heavy. It's going round and round and round. <laughs> One of them is working. You are now going in a deep, deep sleep. Mm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, completely in my part. Mm. Now, to further this uh, experiment, I'm going to place a subject on a case. You're not stuffing in that case. Now, you see... <laughs> <laughs> Relax, it doesn't work. You're not gonna stop me in any other way. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to Mr. Ken Dodd, the studio. Mr. Dodd, here in the middle of the Christmas festivities, with all the family sitting around blazing fires and Christmas trees full of plum pudding and all the rest of it, there seems to be one essential quality in the festive season, and that's laughter. Now, of course, you're a professional salesman of laughter, so you're an expert on it. Oh, thank you very much. Well, um, I, I suppose I am, really. I suppose you could call me a professional salesman of laughter, but as well as that, you know, I also have an academic interest in it. I am professor at Nottyash University. At Nottyash University, I'm the professor of tickleology. Oh. And, uh, and on the other hand, of course, you're also the director general of Nottyash Television. Yes, on the other hand, I have five fingers. And on the other hand, <laughs> I am director of uh, television for the, uh, that part which serves Naughty Ash, yes. yes. And uh, we have actually combined the two, you know. We've been doing some extramural studies. <laughs> oh, that's charming. Yes, oh, that's all. Got to start from the oh. top. Oh. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a slight technical 
hipster oh. tap now and again. Thanks for nothing. No, no trouble. Yeah. <laughs> still on the air. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and tonight we welcome to the studio Mr. Kenneth Dodd. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dodd, in the middle of all the festivities and all the warmth of the family around the fire and full of plum pudding, Christmas trees and all the rest of it, um, there seems to be one essential quality, and that is laughter. Now, yes. you're a professional salesman of laughter, so you're an expert on it. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I suppose, really, you could call me a professional uh, laughter salesman, but as well as that, you know, I also have an academic interest in it. I am at Naughty Ash University. I am the professor of tickleology. And uh, yes, and on the other hand, of course, you're also the director general of Naughty Ash yes, Television. And on the other hand, I have five fingers. And on the other <laughs> hand, I am director of television for uh, that part which serves Naughty Ash. And we have combined the two now. The two hands? Yes, the two hands, yes. We have been doing some extramural studies. Yes. And a lot of people would think that uh, laughter and and university, you would think that so that, it would, that would happen, yes. but it actually happened because actually what has happened ha has been that. I see. And what's been the result of that? That. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, actually, we've uh, we've made a documentary film of Christmas customs, unusual Christmas activities all over the world. We'd like to show it to you, if we may. Potty Pictorial, produced by Naughty Ash University. Ah. Potty Pictorial. Pictorial presents our Christmas pudding edition. Hot, spicy news and views from home and abroad. Oh, family, I like my eggs in threes. <laughs> Let's say a hearty thank you to the voluntary services of Great Britain, and in particular to this wonderful organization, the Meals on Wheels. What a splendid job they do for the old cops, for people. <laughs> One of the more unusual sports played in Lancashire on Christmas Day is that of Grandad Bowl. Bags eye heads. Oh. Hmm. I concede first grunt to you. First grunt accepted, sir. Prepare to be Grandad around. <laughs> Ollie's a Kimbo. Computations. A full groit, sir. I shall try for half a twiddle. Continental fashion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Gossy by. I shall have to try for fat jumps, your grace. <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> I've been burped. I'm going to try for a complete plonk, father. star-studded film premiere in London. A new all-British comedy film called It's Great to be Duffed. Starring some of the greatest comics this country has. Every one of them wild and righteous. How they've made our sides ache in the past. Surely a worthy successor to the crazy gang. Spare a thought for the fearless firemen of Great Britain who find themselves on duty during the holidays. These bold firefighters have been called to help an elderly man and his daughter in dire straits. With the speed and efficiency that leaves one breathless, they swing smoothly into action to rescue the old gentleman. Just look at that enthusiasm. They all want to help. Jove, it must be terribly hot in there. <laughs> Thousands of wildly cheering teenagers flock to see their number one idol, Big Bo Bumphrey. As a result of a nationwide poll, Big Bo Bumphrey has been chosen to receive the final accolade of his career. <laughs> Got him right on the B side. 
And tonight is the big night for ballroom dancing enthusiasts, with the quarterfinals of the All England Ballroom Dancing Championships being held at the Park Lane Vaults. This is couple number six, Dorothy Drainwell and Rupert Floodmore. What perfect time. Squelch, 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 squelch. It's a mission of mercy for the Royal Air Force, dropping food supplies to the tiny village of Inverkocky Leaky in the Scottish Highlands, cut off from civilization by bad roads and 60 foot snowdrifts. The hungry Highlanders gaze skyward. Hope in their hearts, they are overjoyed at the sight of the lads in blue bringing an end to their winter hardships. And what a great day this must be for Professor Van Driver, as he prefers to test his latest scientific invention, the clockwork trousers. <laughs> And it's hats off to the brave young pilot as he prepares to climb into the cockpit and risk everything. What a nerve-wracking moment this must be for the professor as he revs up the engine. Good luck to these clockwork trousers and all who sail in them. A fascinating document. Now, as a result of all these studies, Mr. Dodd, uh, what would you say is the absolute essence of Christmas? The essence, I think the spirit of Christmas is that of giving giving. I think it's a, a, a fabulous thing, a wonderful thing, isn't it, that for a couple of days a year, people forget themselves and actually try to do things and make other people happy. I think this is a wonderful thing, the way they give each other presents. You know, everybody tries to give someone else something sweet, something beautiful, and we'd like to give you a present, ladies and gentlemen, of something sweet and something beautiful. Miss Sandy Shaw. Happy when you're young, you may never be happy again. I know, I 
know that at last I found happiness and I tell you that you can be happy too. Fill me the real pavement made out of gold. Believe all the nice things that you were told. You'll never be blue if you believe it's true. What I say, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to present Miss Sandy Shaw with a little Christmas present because, uh, especially from us to her, because <laughs> let's face it, we can't have her walking around barefoot at Christmas time, can we? It's uh, the season of goodwill. All got to enjoy well, ourselves. Now, Mr. Dodd, uh, you, there's a point there because not everybody is enjoying themselves. Not everybody's playing party Aren't games they? and having a Yuletide tot. Well, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, I see what you mean, yes. Well, of course, there are people, um, there are people who have to be on duty over Christmas, yes. And I suppose these are people who we really should say a big, very big thank you to, because all the people who provide the essential services f so that we can enjoy our Christmas holidays, uh, the elect people who provide all this electricity, the gas people, the Not red people. Not to mention people, the police, of everybody. course. Everybody. I think we should all wish them a very, very Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas to you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much from all of us to you for making ours a Merry Christmas. Mm. Because, as you say, the police. Yes. Now, they, crime doesn't stop over Christmas, does it? And the police also have a lot to contend with the people who get drunk and make a nuisance of themselves, you know, and start creating people. All these drunks they have, the Naughty Ash Police, I know, do have a lot of this trouble. Yes. Could you show us a little bit of this, Mr. Dodd? I wish we could. It should have been in about five minutes ago, actually. <laughs> Naughty Ash Police have more than their share of drunks to deal with. Here's a van load. It's 
It's a riotous Rosas night out. What a resting sight. Cat and coppers. There they go, full of dignity and brown ale. And they've all been on a case. A case of whiskey, by the looks of things. Bottoms up. Hey, 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 what's going on here? Come on, break it up. Break it up, what you think it is? Come on, come on, on your way. Hey, on your way. Come on, on your way. You love this ship. <laughs> Many of them. <laughs> This is Police Constable Dot, one of the mainstays of the Naughty Ash Constabulary. Keen, alert, and a credit to the force, one of the smartest constables on the beat. He's been well turned out on many occasions. Ah, Constable Dotty has spotted a shoe polishing machine. Police dogs of Naughty Ash. These handlers and their highly trained dogs would strike terror into the heart of the most hard. <laughs> what vicious beasts they are. <laughs> For young lovers, every day is Christmas. Just so long as they can be together like our courting couple, Cecil and Stella. Stella is going into the call box to tell Mummy she might be a little late getting home. Cecil has invited her to his flat for Tiffin. Stella has accepted, even though she doesn't know what Tiffin means. <laughs> work is often a very dull, monotonous routine. However, there are times when being on the beat can have a very different meaning.
Well, you know, it's all very well, Mr. Dodd, to talk about festivities, but even at Christmas time, the most peaceful time in the year, we're still in danger from the international scene. We can never be completely relaxed in our festivities, oh, can we? Oh, of course, and I'm sure we can. I'm sure that while we're all enjoying Christmas night, that we, we can all relax because we are being looked after. Our security forces are looking after us, and I've got, and I'm sure everybody else in Great Britain, have got every confidence in our security forces. We can all sleep safely in each other's beds, knowing <laughs> that in our beds, knowing that we are being well looked after by the greatest uh, organization in the world, MI5. <laughs> our job at times is highly dangerous, and we have thwarted the plans of many foreign agents working in this country. For this reason, we in the Secret Service have to be complete masters of the art of disguise. Very often, foreign agents... Come in. Ah, Carruthers. Mission accomplished, Chief. Good show. I knew you could do it. Any trouble? No, sir. Everything went according to plan. <laughs> That's the secret of a good secret service, Carruthers. Organization. I bet you, sir. <laughs> I'm not rushing to things like this willy-nilly. <laughs> true, true. You know, they're very pleased with you upstairs, Carruthers. However, you'll find very little glamour in this job. Well, sir, I'm always made it my business to try and please upstairs. Quite, quite. We of the silent service must tread very carefully. One mistake, and we took a right charge. <laughs> but the tide is turning in our favour, sir. I'm seeing our man, Friday. Mm -hmm. We're giving him a lot of love. <laughs> then, by George, all we can do now is to hope for the best. We must keep our weather eye open and steer a straight course. You know me, sir. I shall act on your instructions. I am bent on doing my best. <laughs> of course. We've had a pretty close shave, Carruthers. <laughs> Afford to lose any more brave men, because after you, I'm the last one. Damn, if only we could round up this whole tribe of reds in one posse. Your worries are over, sir. In front of you, you'll find a list of enemy agents, all down in black and white. <laughs> Great show. Tell you what, Carruthers, let's go and sort out this whole rotten mess over a nice cup of tea. It's nearly four o'clock. Two lumps, sir. Two lumps. And Played any golf lately? I had a quick ride in Istanbul. What's your handicap? Well, <clears throat> at any rate, we'll say it's a remarkable demonstration. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Dodd, is Naughty Ash Television going to show us something of the traditional celebration of Christmas by the Diddy people? Oh, the Diddy people down there. The people in Naughty Ash, you know. They're, they're my people, and that's where I live. That's my home. And I think they're the sweetest and kindest and most good-natured people anywhere in Great Britain. But then, of course, that's because I live there and it's my home. The Diddy people in Naughty Ash are really the most generous people. Dawn is breaking over Naughty Ash. Full of goodwill, the kindly villagers awake from their slumber, eager to greet another day. <laughs> Carrying in the Yule Lock. Yes, the young bloods of Naughty Ash have been out into the Naughty Ash deer forest to select and cut down this splendid Yule Lock which they are about to deliver to the home of a needy pensioner, whether he wants it or not. What a smashing idea. It's Charity knocking at the door, and Charity is always well received in Naughty Ash. And come back next week and try the jackpot. Those dear hearts and gentle people the spirit of the community, friends and comrades, love thy neighbor. How wonderful it is to have good neighbors in times of trouble. 
Here we see a perfect example of neighborly love at work. One of the villagers is ill in bed, and without being asked, everybody, every man and woman in Nottyash has answered the call for help. <laughs> How very wonderful and reassuring it is to see such a selfless attitude in this modern world. It's only in the smaller communities where one sees this great, this very moving comradeship. Long may it continue. Oh dear, baby's dropped her doll from her crown. Mmm, <laughs> a good old-fashioned homemade meat pie. What a mouth-watering sight, and what a delicious smell. And why not? Is it not the season of goodwill? Poor old chap, he can hardly believe his good fortune. A Merry Christmas, old fellow. But I suppose when all's said and done, Mr. Dodd, it's for the children that Christmas is really the great time of I year. I suppose so, really, yes. Children with the presents and, of course, the annual visit to the pantomime. Have you ever thought the trouble that goes into a pantomime to making all the, the props and the costumes and, of course, the livestock that goes together with the pantomime? Mm. Yes, Nottyash plays their contrib contribution there as well. Good morning. Christmas time means pantomime, and pantomime means and requires horses. Liberty horses, pantomime horses. And here at the Nottyash training stables, we have the most unique establishment of its kind in the whole world. Here at the Nottyash stud, we indeed breed pantomime horses. Here we have some of the finest animals available for pantomimes all over the British Isles, indeed all over the world. This beautiful animal here, here Gigi, this beautiful animal here is by Meadow Court out of Earls Court Road. And Blotch. And carry on Gigi, thank you very much. Uh, this magnificent beast here by Tom Arnold out of Emil Littler. Here we go, away you go son. Nesbitt's Choice. Wonderful animal. Now, this one of them is called Freddie Carpenter. Come on, Freddie. A chip off the old block. Come on, Freddie. Now, up by Howard out of Wyndham. You see, all these wonderful beasts, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are... <laughs> they're terribly, terribly affectionate. All these beautiful beasts are, are bred for the kiddies' enjoyment. Think of all the oohs and ahs that will be heard uh, all over the country in various theatres when these beautiful little animals take their final bow. We must not disillusion the little diddy boys and girls. Pantomime horses are real. We believe in them. And here at Nottyash, we are going to do our best to see that there are always plenty of pantomime horses to perform in pantomimes every year to delight both young and old. Good night from the Nottyash Pantomime Horse Training School. Good morning. Nottyash Zoo remains open over the Christmas holidays for the benefit of patrons. And I am standing here outside the reptile house. One of the most interesting things about reptiles, snakes and lizards, is their friendly disposition. They too show goodwill to all... <laughs> men! Men! Merry Christmas, everybody. The jam butty industry of Nottyash is famous the world over. These succulent delicacies are sought after by connoisseurs everywhere. 
strict quality control under hygienic conditions is maintained to ensure that only the finest jam butties leave the Nottyash jam butty mine. Let's have some service, please. Thank you. First class. First class. First class. Second class. Second class. Second class. Possibly Pippi. Possibly Pippi. Possibly Pippi. Black currant. Black currant. Black currant. Slightly nishti. Slightly nishti. Slightly nishti. Mice. 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 Raspberry. Do you mind? Raspberry. <laughs> Oh, that'll never do. Oh, that'll never oh, do. That'll never oh, that'll do. never do. Could we have a little more crust? Could we have a little more crust, please? More crust. More please. crust, please. I'm surprised. <laughs> I thought you'd not. I'm surprised. Oh, I'm not doing anymore. More crust, please. Is this all? What's going on down there? Is there some breakfast shortage? Is there some crust, please? What's happening? This is positivity. Are you on strike? A little more crust, please. A little more crust, please. Let's see what they're not best to have it. Mr. Dodd, you're a sensitive man. Do you think in this great animal-owning democracy of ours that the animals, too, have a feeling for Christmas? Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure all the little doggies and all the cats are tucking into their Christmas dinners now and uh, preparing to go out on the tiles. Oh! <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I know that all the pussies at the Notty Ash Moggy Ranch, I know they all get a great Christmas dinner provided by the sportsmen of Notty Ash, the, the Notty Ash Moggy Ranch. Good morning, and what a truly lovely Christmas it is for all the lucky Moggies here at the Notty Ash Cut Ranch. It's saucers of milk and giblets all round for these lucky little animals at a special dinner provided for them by the sporting folk of Notty Ash. Here at the Moggy Ranch, Moggies of all sorts and descriptions are bred and trained for special work. Uh, for instance, police cats. These police cats do some wonderful work with the lights. We have about 5,000 head of pussies here at the Notty Ash Moggy Ranch. This is home to these little animals. In fact, you might go as far as to say that this is a muse. <laughs> All these little cats here have the time of their nine lives. They eat very, very well. In fact, we get through about six whales a week. And I don't know how many gallons of Advocat. This is old Tom. He has 27 dogs to his credit. <laughs> this is a Manx cat, no head. <laughs> Actually, this is a budgery cat. He likes nothing better than to sit on the branch of a tree and whistle at passing birds. <laughs> and even though it's Christmas time in Notty Ash, we still have a little left in the kitty. <laughs> now, this lady, a few weeks ago, she ate six balls of wool. Yesterday, she had mittens. <laughs> Another interesting point about these cats is that they have all been trained by one of the world's leading catologists, Dr. Rufus Chukabutty. They have all been trained not to whistle. Just listen to this. You see, not a peep. What great self-control this cat is showing now. He's absolutely bursting for a whistle. <laughs> And so from all of us here at the Moggy Ranch at Notty Ash, it's catty bye, everybody. Catty bye. But you know, you know, Mr. Dodd, I always think that one of the nicest parts of Christmas is when all the children have gone to bed and the Indeed. old folks are gathered in the lamplight and telling the old legends of long ago, Indeed, you know, yes, like that, yes. that lovely... Pat Mick uh, and... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Pat Mick and... What about that, the young, that lovely young lady of Ealing? Yes. Uh, no, 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 not that one. Ah, uh, no, it was the night. The night before Christmas. It was the night. That's a lovely Don't one. But I know the other one. What about the one, that beautiful one, that always brings tears, I think, to everybody's eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, up spoke the workhouse master, his face as bold as brass. I don't want your Christmas pudding. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> uh, The other one goes with it. It was Christmas Day in the Doss House, and Matt Mooney stood up and said, we'll get no pancakes today, lad, so they all clambered back into bed. I think that's <laughs> wonderful. I think the workhouse suggests uh, the, you know, the, the Christmas part, the really heart of gold stuff in the, the workhouse. The w <laughs> <laughs> we, we are now a merry party. <laughs> 
It's Christmas Day in the workhouse. <laughs> A, a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Mugridge. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and, and a Merry Christmas to you, Robert Robinson. A Merry Christmas, a, General. A, a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas, you just old pensioners. Because our good fellow parcels here got these lovely little baby turkeys yes. and chickens. Tell you what, let's see. Let's see if there's any wish bones. <laughs> and then we can all make a wish. A wish for Christmas. Let's see the wish bones. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very tense Royal Herbert Hall, the scene of this year's final of the Corn and Bunyan Championship. <laughs> After some aching eliminating rounds, the two finalists this year are Mr. Michael Foote, the man from Ankle, <laughs> and the distinguished German, Dr. Ludwig Skoll. And I may say this afternoon that Mr. Michael Foote, at the weigh-in, uh, his corn stood at two and a quarter centimeters, and Dr. Ludwig Skoll stood at two and five-eighths from root to tip, and that's the best he's measured this year. The judge is now giving the final summing up to both men, the distinguished pediatrician, Sir Archibald Leathersole, and he's now giving them the rules, which are quite simple, and may I remind you of them, the man who can cause the most pain to his competitor. They're now limbering up for the first of the two rounds, and the first of the two rounds is for humidity and sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen. So now, the two distinguished competitors prepare to take part. Must flush to Mr. Michael Foot. They pour in the boiling water. <laughs> <laughs> Horribly stoical, sir. Now, Dr. Skull. Close, very close indeed. Uh, shockingly spot on Dr. Score, nine and a half each. And a very oh. close score indeed. Now, now prepare, prepare for the second and last round, which were durability and for pain range. But first of all, he's checking them for color. A beautiful coruscation. Thank Mr. you. Thank now, you. Doctor. Thank you. Very kind. Thank oh, you. terribly volcanic, sir. <laughs> and now. Score seven and a half each. And again, it's a draw. Now. Now for the final foot rending <clears throat> test. Doctor, your honour. <laughs> to make his drop. <laughs> Very tense moment there. Thank you very much. Now, Doctor, your turn, Mr. Foot. 
Is he going to give way or not? Challenge. This morning we have been challenging the housewives of Upper Clapham. Can you tell the difference between Doddy Margarine and Butter? So far, none of them have been able to tell me the difference. <laughs> Hello. We are here today at the five minute car wash to rigorously field test this brand new washing powder, Bump. Bump the jewel cleaner for people with dirty jewels. Say bump to all your cleaning problems, but best of all for car washing. Bump makes little of car washing. Bump makes that big job seem small. Watch now this first ever demonstration of bump on a London taxi. Right ho, cabby. And now, here it comes. Proof indeed that Bump really does cut down on your car washing. <laughs> Remember the word, Bump. Ladies, for all your cleaning problems, it's Bump. Housewives, say Bump to your grocer.
yourself, maniacs. This is your old do-it-yourself chum, Andy Mann. <clears throat> now, I'll not keep you a moment. I'm just putting the rest of these nuts and bolts into the wife's mince pie. <clears throat> Good. That'll shut her up for a bit. Actually, at the moment, my dear lady wife, she's in bed, actually, with a slip disc. She was going upstairs last night and suddenly it went. Oh, it gave me a terrible shock because she nearly dropped me. And <laughs> today, as well as being Christmas Day, is actually my dear lady wife and myself. It's our wedding anniversary. Our wedding anniversary this very day. And this afternoon, I went round to the vicar's house. The very same vicar that married us. I went round to the vicar's house and broke all his windows. <laughs> and, at the moment, at the moment, we we're expecting a visit from the wife's mother, Doris. Doris Karloff, I call her. She's, she's a very nice woman, the wife's mother. She's very busy. She's looking for a, a spare time job at the moment. I've been trying to get her fixed up with a firm working on the Aswam Dam. And she does a lot of good in her spare time. She's in the territorials. She's a roadblock. <laughs> She did a lot of good work during the war. She was out at the front. She was out at the back as well. <laughs> oh, what a whopper of a woman. You've never seen anything. I'll never forget one day during the summer, she had this plastic mac over a floral dress and she was standing in our back garden and the man next door said to me, he said, oh, I didn't know you had a greenhouse. And, <laughs> oh, she came round the other night wearing a fur coat and the dog went for her. <laughs> he thought she was a monster moggy. <laughs> He's not far wrong, actually. This, this do-it-yourself business, ladies and gentlemen, actually, for me, it's a hobby. And I think every man should have a hobby because I think uh, a healthy body means a healthy mind. I haven't been well for years. <laughs> I must admit I do very well here in my little shed. I've, I've got all... I'd like, to show me, I'd like to show you my equipment because I've got it all here. Here, this is my toolbox here. Now, let me see what I've got in the old toolbox. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nothing. No, actually, in here I've got a bottle of brown ale, an ounce of shag and a copy of the carpet baggers. <laughs> I must give it back to the vicar, actually, be wondering where he got it. And, Really and truly, ladies and gentlemen, I remember the words of my poor old father when he said to me, he said to me, it's a wise father that knows his own child, uh, Beryl. <laughs> and uh, he was right. Now, you don't need me, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need me to tell you that Christmas wouldn't be anything at all without decorations. I've been very busy this week helping the lady next door with her decorations. The woman next door has been putting all the decorations up and helping her with different little knick-knacks around the house. You, she needs a bit of help at her age. She's 23. Um, <laughs> as I say, I've been doing the decorations in our house. We've got this beautiful Christmas tree here and I've been decorating and it's a real Christmas tree. It's not one of those phony things. It's a real genuine Christmas tree with, you know, genuine pine needles. <laughs> our dog got the shock of his life. And anyway, that's to say, I've been decorating this Christmas tree. I've got a furry on the top. It's lovely fur her. It's a hurry furry. And all these lovely furry lights and being a bit of an electrician myself, I've built this lovely sign for the wife. It's all done with electricity and it lights up, it lights up a Christmas goodwill message for the wife. I can just see the wife's face when she comes in the room and sees this message shining at her. Actually, it's, <laughs> it's a lovely message there and when she comes in the room, this will shine out and the look on the wife's face will be a real treat. I'll just switch it on. There we are. Now, isn't that lovely? <laughs> when the wife sees that, there'll be murder. There'll be such a punch of honesty. We won't know what we're doing after time. Because, honest to goodness, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever want to do anything, this, should, this thing should be off the air about ten seconds ago. And we should have the... <laughs> He's a magnificent ballet dancer. One is left quite breathless. It's amazing when you realize both his kneecaps are halfway up the leg of his trousers. 
poor chap. I didn't know that. He's a born dancer. Mm. He has a natural bent. <laughs> I can't quite see it from this angle. <laughs> the whole family have theatrical connections. Mm -hmm. At this time of the year, his brother's a dame. There's a lot of it going on in this business. <laughs> They're very musical, too. Mm. Have you heard his father on the glockenspiel? I'd rather not, if you don't mind. <laughs> when he was a small boy, his father gave him a bassoon. Smelly things, I always think. <laughs> ah, uh, I do believe he's going to pirouette in the furry glade. <sighs> Does the fellow know shame? <laughs> that is not the British way. <clears throat> Believe it or not, mm -hmm. his grandmother, his grandmama, still has her tutu. You can't say that for many women at her age. <laughs> That's his wife on the front row. She has a large diadem. Oh, the poor woman. <laughs> Yet she's smiling quite bravely. He's going to put her in Swan Lake next week. Why, haven't they had some sort of disagreement? Oh, dear. Huh? What is it? I do believe, I do believe he's going to entre-shot. Is he the swine? I can't sit here and watch him after he just told me. I must leave. I'll come with you, Dame Margot. <laughs>
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, because it's, uh, I hope you like those songs, because I think that's part of Christmas, isn't it? The singing part of it, you know, all the God King wants us love on the first day of Christmas, arrest you many gentlemen, oh, bless me heart and soul. You know, all those uh, carols, they're marvellous, aren't they, Mrs? Here yeah, they are. I've been out carol singing. I went out carol singing with my granddad the other night and my little Uncle Willie, and we went an awful long way, you know, to this big house. We went an awful long way and got our feet soaking wet, and when we got there, the man gave us, we knocked on the door, and the man gave us a pound each. He said, you deserve it, lads. This is a lighthouse. Anyway, <laughs> as I have this marvellous time this week, where with all the parties, I've been going to loads and loads of parties. I went to a smashing party the other night in Chelsea. It was a wonderful party. There was just me and 500 other old pensioners. <laughs> and and it actually, I got the invitation in the morning, and it just said, it's a come-as-you-are party. And have you ever tried going down an escalator with your singlet halfway over your head? Anyway, I, uh, I thought, well, I may as well go, Chelsea, because I might meet someone that could do me a bit of good, you know, like a vet. And I was going there, and this girl stopped me in the street. She said, Excuse me, handsome. Um, can you tell me the way to the opticians? Well, I, I said, I I'm down in Chelsea, and it was a real, you know, it was a real kinky party. Everybody smoking vodka and stuff like that. And all very well to do people. There was this big fella, this very distinguished, very tall, distinguished, scruffy looking yobbo, and he was. <laughs> Did you like that one? I'll tell it again in a minute. <laughs> He was drinking brandy, you know, and he just sort of sniffed the, you know how they do the bouquet. He just sniffed the brandy glass. He said, hmm, I'll kill that cat. And it was <laughs> saying, um, all the people there, they were all eating these, uh, all eating these little cocktail sausages, you know, with uh, little pointed sticks stuck in them. And all those little sausages were lying uh, there on the plate going, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, oh. Well, you would too, physically. <laughs> As I say, um, I had uh, two Bloody Murrays and a flipping dandelion and burdock and uh, 
And I didn't notice the sign. The time went on, you know. When I got home, my mother said, how dare you? Don't you know it's half past nine? And so I thought, well, I'm sorry. She said, well, did you get your cocoa? I said, no, they were all drinking spirits. And uh, she... Well, actually, see, I nearly didn't get up next for the next day because we went to the pantomime. Because this is the time of the year, isn't it? We all go to pantomimes. And I love them, you know, when all the pantomime time and all the men dre get dressed up as women and all the women get dressed up as men. And... Wouldn't you think they get a proper job? <laughs> no. My Auntie Nelly was in pantomime once. Well, she was nearly in pantomime. She tried to get into Cinderella. She went to the stage door, and the stage door keeper said, Oh, the pumpkins arrived. Anyway, um, <laughs> my little Uncle Willie, you know, uh, I went to his party, the, his office party, and he works for a firm of uh, timber people, you know. They export a lot of timber, and, of course, they send a lot of wood overseas as well. And um, <laughs> we went in. <laughs> Went into my little Uncle Willie's party, and, and you know, everybody, everybody rushed over to me right away, and they said, quick, let's see if he's got a name on his collar. So, I, <laughs> he said, come in, trubanized, and I went in, and my little Uncle Willie, I could tell, you know, he'd been drinking a lot of ginger wine, because he was walking funny, and he was, started giving this impression, this fabulous impression of the managing director, and he starts a new job on Monday, and <laughs> he started getting a bit obstreperous, you know, he, he wanted to fight everybody, he said, I, I said, I'll, I said, I'll fight everybody, I'll fight any man in this telephone box. And <laughs> he said, he said, he said, I always drive better when, I'm, when I've had a few drinks. And the doctor said, be out careful. He said, otherwise you'll have the splints off. Actually, actually, ladies and gentlemen, I've had some smashing... <laughs> Thank you, love. Keep it up, love. It's you and me against them. We're... <laughs> Actually, ladies and gentlemen, I have some smashing presents for Christmas. I've got this beautiful book here. It's, uh, I don't know, uh, actually, how they knew I really wanted this particular book because it's one that just suits me. It's called The Girl's Own Book of Romance. And it's... <laughs> I will, I'm awful. Why do I want it for? Because I'm awful romantic, that's why. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I am, is it? I'm awful, ro awful romantic. How? How was at a wedding a fortnight ago? How was the best man? <laughs> well, I think it was, anyway. <clears throat> Time will tell. I, I was uh, very romantic, and... Um, this girl's book, it's all this girl's book of romance. It's all full of, uh, all good, clean, healthy, terribly boring stories. And this one is called Pam's First Romance. I'll just read it, because it's a fabulous thing. It was Pam's last day at St. Bernard's. And if you're wondering why it was called St. Bernard's, you should take a look at the headmistress here. <laughs> That's either a barrel round her neck, or she's got a king-side Adam an apple. So, so we start here. <clears throat> oh, no! Not that horrid old gym slip again, said Pam. I'm afraid so, said her father. I've nothing else to wear. Um, <laughs> Pam left St Bernard's, and before she found a job, she wanted to go on a cruise. Oh, Mummy, she pleaded, let me travel alone. Her mother gasped, what about the chaps? Don't worry about the chaps, Mummy. I'll take this tin of ointment with me. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm old enough to take care of myself, said 43-year-old Pam. The <laughs> Next day, Pam boarded the Sunshine Liner. It's eggs for breakfast in the morning, miss, said the steward. I know, replied Pam. I heard the ship laying too. <laughs> no. <laughs> that night... No. That night, Pam stood on the deck of the ship, watching the broken outline of jagged cliffs. Jagged cliffs. <laughs> she watched them for two hours before she realized it was her nose. And <laughs> suddenly she felt something brush her leg. It was a steward with a leg brush. <laughs> he apologized and touched his cap. She was very annoyed because it was in his back pocket at the time. <laughs> he must have stood there. <laughs> she must have stood there for a long time because she was startled to feel a tap on her shoulder. She'd fallen asleep in the bath. <laughs> she looked up and saw Clive. She looked up and she saw Clive. He was the first mate. Well, he would be if she had anything to do with it. <laughs> oh, darling, he gasped. <laughs> oh, darling, he gasped. I love you terribly. I know, she said. I wish you'd do something about it. 
<laughs> I've got some fabulous books, actually, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this one, actually, here, has a wonderful story here all about Christmas. This book here has a wonderful story about a Christmas, and I'd like to tell it to you and remind you about it, because it's the old, old story, the favourite Christmas story of, you know, Charles Dickens' story. I love these Dickensian Christmases, don't you, love? You know, all the funny names they had. Uriah Heep and Nicholas Nickleby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, not everybody enjoys Christmas. I mean, they hate Christmas like this fellow here, Scrooge. Scrooge, he was a mean, miserable old skinflint. Do you remember Scrooge, Mrs? <laughs> you married him? No, no, that's what I think. No, that's not true. No, Scrooge. Scrooge. He, he was an old miser. Not like me. I'm a young miser. Uh, anyway, one Christmas Eve, it was freezing, bitterly cold, and Scrooge was sitting in his counting house, examining his frozen assets. <laughs> Suddenly, a shocking draft shot up his index column. <laughs> his face, his face was all wrinkled up. He had little beady eyes, a big hooked nose, and no teeth. And he was sitting there going, hee hee, I'm ugly, hee hee hee. He was sitting there and he thought, by Jove, this tea isn't half cold. When he looked down, the inkwell was empty. <laughs> he was very nearly blotto. <laughs> right next door, working, working at his desk, was Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's clerk. <laughs> Bob Cratchit. <laughs> Scrooge. Scrooge called out to him, Cratchit, Cratchit. <laughs> Do you mind if I call you Smith? <laughs> You've got a big hole in your trousers, Cratchit. Patch it, Cratchit. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody might snatch it. <laughs> outside, outside in the cold street, a group of carol singers were singing. And one of them, a little ditty fella, he had a candle, a candle. He had a candle on the end of a long pole, and a very tall Scotsman wearing a short kilt said to him, Would you mind being a bit more careful with this pole? This is a new sporran. Anyway, back in the counting house, miserable old Scrooge scratched his quill and dipped his nose in the ink. And Scrooge made his way home. The night was full of fog and the smell of a burning sporran. And he passed a worried-looking cabby. The cabby says, this horse hasn't eaten a thing for two weeks. And Scrooge said, I'm not surprised. You've got the nose bag on the wrong end. <laughs> he saw a group of little barefoot urchin, urchins with their noses pressed against the window of a baker's shop and saying, cool, watch my ink cake, watch my ink cake. Everybody he saw looked very, very happy. And because it was Christmas, this annoyed Scrooge. He said, Christmas, Christmas, bah, bum hug. Hey, bah. Hey, hung bum. Um, ah, Christmas, conkers. <laughs> he saw the revelers. He saw all this group of revelers on their way to the theatre to see the latest ch show, Charles Dickens, in Seacombe. And Scrooge got to his front door, and he was just going to put the key in the lock, and he noticed that the door knocker, as he stirred it, it seemed to change from the knocker he'd known for years into the leering, twisted face of Jacob Marley, his partner. Scrooge looked. He looked, he said, Oh, he thought to himself, by Joe, I'd better lay off the ink. <laughs> he opened the door and he went into his miserable cold digs. Inside, he was terribly cold and dank. He didn't half dink. <laughs> he went into his little pokey room and it was freezing. He was proper parky. He was too mean to buy coal, so he stood on his head. <laughs> he went into his little pokey room. It was freezing. It was proper parky. And he was too mean to buy coal, so he stood on his head, rubbed his knees together, and set fire to his clogs. <laughs> he looked at his cold, empty bed. He made a bowl of hot gruel, put his nightshirt on, climbed in. And as he sat there, <laughs> with the hot gruel soaking through his nightshirt, <laughs> He looked out of the window and everybody in the street was laughing and joking because it was Christmas. Everybody was happy, all except a tall Scotsman who was standing underneath a lamppost, <laughs> staring at his gutted sporran. <laughs> Scrooge took his boots off and smiles as the cat shot up the chimney. He, he, climbed, <laughs> he climbed into bed. I'll have a read before I go to sleep, he thought to himself, as he felt under the bed for Chambers Encyclopedia. <laughs> He was just going up to sleep when in the distance he heard a train going through the night. Oh! 
and a dog howling. He, went, he thought, I know what that is. A dog's fell off a train. <laughs> All of a sudden, there was a terrible, horrible moan, and a ghost walked right through the wall. Scrooge was terrified. It was Jacob Marley's ghost, and he was transparent. He could see his small change. <laughs> and Jacob's ghost said, Ah, you're a miserable old twatter, Ebenezer. It's Christmas. Get out and enjoy yourself. Go and have your Christmas dinner with Bob Cratchit. If you don't, I'll haunt you. He was visited by three spirits. Johnny Walker, Old Grandad, and Nancy Whiskey. <laughs> Scrooge didn't want to be haunted, and he realized what a miserable old man he'd been all his life. So he stuck his head out of the window, and he shouted down to a little lad. He said, boy, boy, is that big bird still in the butcher's shop? The lad said, no, sir, she's gone to work at the co-op. <laughs> Scrooge bought a big turkey and lots of presents, and he went round to Bob Cratchit's house, and Bob, she had 24 children and a habit of leaning very heavily on his walking stick. <laughs> He was amazed to see old Scrooge. Scrooge gave him a bottle of whiskey. He gave presents to all the children, even to little tiny Tim, who was sitting up in the ashtray. And little tiny Tim said, God bless us, everyone. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. And since 1965 is nearly at an end, here I've found a really great, great song to finish our show, to nearly finish, bring our show to an end tonight. It's a really fabulous ballad, ladies and gentlemen, which I do hope you'll all love in 1966. And it gives me great pleasure to sing this beautiful song for you. <laughs> So long. Good luck. Cheerio. In other words. Catchy bye. Au revoir. Arrivederci. Vita si. Bornas nerch. In other words, Kaki I hate to leave you, you know. Ah, but when, when you gotta go, ah, you, you, you gotta go, you gotta go. Thank you. Happy little kiss on the women's system.
that uh, this beautiful lady, Miss Sandy Shaw. Do I get anything to go? Thank you very much. Mr. Irving Davis, Mr. Wee Johnny Lolly, ladies and gentlemen. Wee Johnny Lolly, thank you very much. Miss Patricia Hayes, ladies and gentlemen. Pat Hayes, Little Jerry, and Mr.